I'm Dr. Frida, and today I'm going to give you seven early warning symptoms for type 1 diabetes. Diabetes mellitus type 1 mostly affects young children and adolescents, and it can lead to multiple devastating complications. It can cause kidney failure, blindness, limb amputations, and it can put you at a higher risk for heart disease and strokes. When diabetes type 1 is caught early, there is a better chance of managing it properly and preventing some of these complications. If you had a loved one with diabetes type 1, wouldn't you want to catch it early? Me too. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about seven early warning symptoms of type 1 diabetes. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida, a medical doctor who has been triple board certified in nephrology, internal medicine, and pediatrics, and I'm going to give you seven early warning symptoms of type 1 diabetes. I'm going to break it down in four parts. One, I'm going to give you the definition of diabetes mellitus type 1. Two, I'll tell you the cause. Three, I'll list out the seven early warning symptoms for type 1 diabetes. And four, I'll talk about how to manage it. So let's go. What is diabetes? Diabetes is a disorder that disrupts the way your body utilizes glucose or sugar. You see, every cell in your body needs sugar in order to properly function. And in order for sugar to enter those cells, it needs a hormone called insulin. Insulin acts like a key that unlocks the cell so that sugar or glucose can get in. Now, if you don't have enough insulin in your body, then you don't have enough keys to open the cells and your cells can't function properly. So the sugar does not get into the cells. Instead, it remains in the bloodstream and you get high blood sugar or hyperglycemia. This is what happens in diabetes. Now for diabetes type one specifically, the cause is just that you don't have enough insulin and it's usually due to the cells that produce insulin being destroyed. So insulin is produced in cells in your pancreas called beta cells. And your pancreas is that organ that's kind of right on the upper part of your abdomen, kind of right under your chest, and the beta cells produce the insulin. Well, in diabetes mellitus type one, there is a destruction of these beta cells. There's a destruction of these insulin producing cells, and they're usually destroyed by auto antibodies. Now, what do I mean by autoantibodies? I mean antibodies that your body produces, but instead of the antibodies doing what they're supposed to do, which is to fight germs, to fight bacteria, to fight you know all of the, the things that can infect you, instead, these antibodies turn on you. They turn on you and they attack your body. In this case, they attack your beta cells, the cells that produce insulin. Kind of like an autobiography is a book that you write about yourself. Autoantibodies attack yourself, unfortunately, and this is what happens in type 1 diabetes. Once these autoantibodies destroy enough of your cells that produce insulin, you no longer have enough keys to open up the cells, so sugar cannot get into the cells, and you have diabetes mellitus type 1, a disruption in the way your cells utilize glucose. Now, most people who have diabetes actually have diabetes type 2. Only 10% of diabetic patients are type 1 diabetics. But because diabetes mellitus type 1 mostly affects young children and adolescents, it's key that everyone who's around children understands how to detect it. So if you are a parent, grandparent, auntie, teacher, anyone who's around young children or adolescents, this information will be helpful to you. So now, here are seven early warning symptoms of type 1 diabetes. Number one, excessive urination or polyuria. So this just means that you're urinating more frequently and you're actually having larger volume of urine. So when your body is not able to process glucose properly, when that insulin is low and the glucose cannot get into the cells, well, now you have just an excess amount of sugar in the bloodstream and this sugar can also flow into the urine. When this sugar is in the urine, guess what? Water follows the sugar and that causes you to make more urine, a greater volume, and it makes the person with diabetes type one actually have polyuria. 
Here's what's interesting. Not only will you be using the restroom more frequently during the day, but people with type one diabetes may also have nocturia, or they may have to get up many times at night to urinate. Another key, if you're dealing with a child who at one point has been potty trained and now all of a sudden that child is wetting the bed again, that could be a huge warning sign that the child has type one diabetes. We call this secondary enuresis, meaning your child was potty trained, they weren't using the restroom in the bed at night, they did not have enuresis, but now all of a sudden they've developed it, secondary enuresis. At any rate, if you are dealing with someone who is urinating very frequently, this could be a warning symptom of type one diabetes. Number two, excessive thirst or polydipsia. If you are dealing with a child or an adolescent who's all of a sudden drinking, drinking, drinking a lot of water, like insatiable, always thirsty, always thirsty, that could be a warning sign of type one diabetes. Just like we discussed that if you have type one diabetes, you may have that polyuria where you're urinating all the time. Well, that can be dehydrating. And so what happens? You're going to drink. And the more you drink, the more you drink, the more you urinate. And so it's just an ongoing cycle. So please, if you have a child, an adolescent, or anyone who is having polydipsia, if they're drinking, drinking, thirsty all the time, never satisfied, this could be a warning sign of type one diabetes. Number three, excessive hunger. A warning symptom of type one diabetes can be excessive hunger, someone who wants to eat all the time or polyphagia. And so just as sure as by definition, diabetes is a disruption in the proper way you utilize your glucose or your sugar. Well, what happens is that when you don't have enough insulin and that sugar is not getting into the cells, well, the cells aren't getting the energy. They're not getting the energy. And so if you don't have energy, if you can't process the glucose, then your body is going to be hungry or starved. And so a person with type one diabetes may be eating, 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 always hungry, always eating, but guess what? they're not gaining weight. In fact, they may actually be losing weight because in type one diabetes, because you have that lack of insulin, you will end up getting an excess of glucagon and glucagon can lead to the breakdown of fat. And so if you're dealing with someone who is hungry, insatiable, never full, never satisfied, yet they're not gaining weight. In fact, they might be losing weight. This could be another warning sign of type one diabetes. Number four, fruity breath. Yes, fruity breath. A warning sign of type 1 diabetes could be an abnormal smell in the breath, something that is really fruity. And this can be due to diabetic ketoacidosis. And so I want to talk about this just for a spell. When you have low insulin and high glucagon and you're breaking down fat, that can lead to a production of something called ketones. And these ketones can lead to your body being in an acidic state, meaning very acid-like, low pH. And this is called diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic because of the high blood sugar, keto, the excess ketones from the, from the fat breakdown, and acidosis because your pH is low. When this happens, this can lead to an abnormal smell of the breath that's almost a fruity odor. So really pay attention. If you have a child, an adolescent, or someone who's having these symptoms and you smell that breath, if it's a strong breath odor and it's fruity, something that's kind of different than what you've normally smelled, beware, it could be a sign of type one diabetes. In addition to that diabetic ketoacidosis causing that fruity odor of the breath, it can also cause some abnormal breathing where you have really rapid, deep breaths. That's because a child is trying to blow off that excess acid. And so really deep, rapid breathing could be another warning sign of type one diabetes. Also, that child could have abdominal pain or even confusion, you know? So if you have a kid who is having some of these symptoms and now they're not doing it as well in school as normal, they're not concentrating, they're kind of out of sorts, all of this should make you think type one diabetes. Number five, tingling of the fingers and toes. This is very important because one of the complications of diabetes mellitus type one 
is a peripheral neuropathy or diabetic neuropathy where the nerves in your fingers and in your toes are actually affected and it can cause a tingling. And so make sure that you pay attention. If you're dealing with this child, this adolescent, this young adult, anyone who's having these symptoms and they're letting you know, ah, I don't have that much feeling in my toes or I feel like a, a pins and needles sensation in my fingers. The worrisome thing about this peripheral neuropathy or this diabetic neuropathy is that if the person with diabetes mellitus type one has this tingling of the fingers and toes and they get the numbness of the feet, if they walk around barefooted, then they could step on things that can cause wounds in the feet, but they won't feel it. This can lead to infection or sores in the feet and people with diabetes type one will often have poor wound healing. And so if they're walking around, they have this wound festering in the foot and they don't feel it, it won't get treated, it can get worse. And ultimately this can lead to limb amputations. And so you want to catch things early. If you're dealing with someone who's complaining of numbness or tingling in the fingers and toes, this indeed could be a warning sign of diabetes mellitus type one. Six, fatigue. Fatigue can definitely be an early warning symptom of diabetes mellitus type one. And after everything that I've talked about, you can see why. If you are having an improper processing of your glucose and you don't have energy, then you're going to be tired. Also, if you have this polyuria, if you're getting up at night to urinate all the time and you're running, running, running to the restroom, that can disrupt your sleep and cause you to be fatigued. So while fatigue is kind of a non-specific symptom, it can happen in a lot of disorders, make sure you pay attention and you look at a patient as a whole. And if they're having these symptoms and they're having this fatigue despite getting a proper amount of sleep, remember, it can be an early warning symptom of diabetes mellitus type one. Number seven, nausea and vomiting. Yes, nausea and vomiting can also be a warning symptom of type one diabetes. So if your child has diabetes mellitus type one and that insulin is extremely low and now they have diabetic ketoacidosis, that acidotic state, that acidemia can actually cause them to have vomiting. And the vomiting can be quite severe. It can lead them to having dry heaves once they vomited out pretty much everything in their system. And it can even cause them to get tears in their GI system and their gastrointestinal system, specifically the esophagus, that tube between the throat and the stomach. And so if you have a child who's having some of these symptoms and they have nausea and vomiting, this could be a warning symptom of type one diabetes. Now let's talk briefly about the treatment. You definitely want to consult your physician. If you're dealing with a child, you want to consult the pediatrician and that pediatrician will likely refer your child to an endocrinologist, a specialist who deals with diabetes. Because diabetes type one is due to a lack of insulin, the mainstay in the treatment is going to be giving insulin. And so a treatment is going to be injecting insulin. There are all types of technologies which have made the giving of insulin much better. There are even insulin pumps, meaning that the patient can actually attach the insulin pump to the body. The glucose can be monitored and the insulin can be given while the child moves about with their activities or the young adult or the adolescent or whoever has the diagnosis. And so definitely there are some treatments which help to make life a little easier than it used to be as far as giving insulin. Diet is going to be a very important part of managing diabetes. You want to make sure that there is a carbohydrate control. You're going to have to learn to count carbs and a nutrition consult is recommended. Exercise and regular physical activity is an important part of the management program. And then also psychosocial support. There's a lot that goes into having the diabetes. There can be a lot of psychological stress. And so certainly you want to consult your physician and you may need some therapy or some counseling or being in group therapy or in groups with other people who are also going through the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus type one. Understanding the diagnosis is key. And so you definitely want to understand all of the potential complications and have an open dialogue with your physician or your pediatrician so that you know when it's time to be referred to different specialists. So yes, the endocrinologist will be the person who is mainly dealing with the diabetes, but again, the diabetes can lead to kidney failure. And so you want to make sure those kidney numbers are watched and so that you know if you need to go to a nephrologist or to a heart doctor or to a hematologist. So definitely a part of the management is understanding your own disease so you can be your own advocate. 
I discussed that diabetes mellitus type 1 mostly occurs in young children and adolescents, but it can occur in adults also. So if you found this video to be helpful and informative, please be sure to share it with the people you care about, especially people who are dealing with children. If you have not done so already, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be among the first to know when I release new medical content. Also, follow me on Instagram at Dr.Frida. There you'll see how I try to live my everyday life. I also let you know when I'm having various media appearances, television appearances, speaking engagements, community service. I thank you for watching. I appreciate your support and I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.